All right, we are now joined at the podium by Buffalo head coach Felicia Leggett Jack, Summer Hempill, and Daisha Fair. We will start with an opening statement from head coach. What exciting time this is. This is what <clears throat> you, you wake up every morning for uh, as a coach is, is to get to, out to March. And, you know, you see all these uh, coaches that, that, that it's been in the business for 30 and 40 years and you know it's it's that feeling you get something you can't describe it's this excitement and enthusiasm it's like the purpose uh of breathing if you will and uh we're so thrilled to be here we're so humble by this opportunity and um uh, as a head coach and <laughs> i gotta tell you it's been part of my life for the last 33 years and as a coach and and a player probably a couple more years after that before that Every single March has been the most important uh, month of the year. My birthday's in September, but for some reason I get more excited about the month of March. So uh, let's go. We'll now open it up for questions for the student athletes. Please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Any questions for the student athletes? Uh, Heather Prusak, WIVB in Buffalo. Um, this is for DeAsia or for Summer. Um, you know, how helpful is it coming into this game? You guys have such momentum on your side, winning nine straight, 14 out of 15. Just what does that do for your confidence level coming into this one? Uh, we just take it one game at a time. Uh, we don't necessarily look back at our wins or losses. Uh, we do use them as um, information for our upcoming games, though, to just see what we did good, what we can do better, uh, what we need to work on. But other than that, uh, we like to look forward to uh, who our next opponent is and how we can get the win out of the next 40 minutes. And then right here down in front. Rachel Lindsay from the Buffalo News. First off, what does it mean to, for Deja or for Summer, here first off to be in Thompson Bowling Arena, kind of the house that Pat Summit built, but at the same time, how do you not kind of let that, those feelings overwhelm you as you prepare for the tournament? Well, we just look at it as another game, no matter where we are. So, I mean, although she was a wonderful coach and had a wonderful career, we just look at it as another game. Over here. Therese Walker, the Associated Press, uh, for both Summer and, uh, I'm gonna mess up your name even though I've been trying to spell it or say it correctly. You, go, you all were uh, in the tournament last year in the bubble and have been around a little bit. How different has this experience been so far? Uh, have you gotten your swag box yet? And uh, have you noticed anything that maybe stands out that's improved from last year? Um, well, to pronounce her name is Deasia. And uh, for your question, um, we didn't make the NCAA tournament last year, so we didn't have that experience. But uh, just to be here is a blessing as far as uh, swag boxes or anything. Uh, we've gotten sneakers so far, and honestly, anything that we're given, we're thankful for. Um, it's been a while since we've been to the NCAA tournament. I'm obviously a six year, so I've had that experience. But to see the uh, underclassmen get this experience as well is tremendous. And I'm thankful that we're here and hopefully we're able to uh, just represent Buffalo in the best way possible. For either of you guys, um, I think we've all seen over the years that mid-majors shouldn't be underestimated. Um, so for you guys com coming in here, do you kind of have that um, chip on your shoulder mentality coming into an SEC team's home court? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, do, do you guys kind of have a little chip on your shoulder being a mid-major coming into, you know, an SEC team's home court? Um, I would say yes. Um, just the fact that uh, mid-majors are honestly underrated and people don't really give us that, um, I wouldn't say press, but the recognition that uh, we do deserve in a way. Um, so just to be here on this court and obviously the history surrounded by Tennessee, 
um, we are, uh, we do want to put on for uh, not only Buffalo, but for mid-majors and just show that uh, we do deserve to be in this tournament and uh, recognized. Uh, Jenna Caleri, Channel 7, WKBW in Buffalo. Summer, correct me if I'm wrong, have you been with this program every single time they've made the NCAA tournament? Um, they made it the year before I initially came to Buffalo, which was 2016, which was their first MAC championship. But since then, it's been a while, but I've been with the program. Okay, so you've, because I know you're six, I, I, the, the six year senior thing confused me. So you've been with this program three of their four trips to the NCAA tournament, and you've watched this program go, grow year after year. How special has it been to join this program all those years ago, see how much this program has, has grown, and to see the success that this program has continued to do year after year? Um, it's honestly amazing, and um, obviously the players are the ones that are out there um, putting the points up, defending, but we got to give uh, recognition to our coaches who put the scouts together, who put the time together, who um, leave their families to make sure um, that their student athletes that they're coaching are getting the best experience from their college careers. So uh, just to see the time that they've put in um, over the time throughout my six years, it just goes to show that uh, without them, there's no us, and without us, there's no them. Deja, when you look at the matchup with Tennessee, I know they've got um, a really dynamic blocker. They are going to be without their leading scorer once again, though. Just when you're watching them on, fi on film, how do you guys stack up against them, and what jumps out to you when you're watching Tennessee? Well, the biggest thing I see is they're just bigger than us, and that really is the only thing that I see that's different. So I wouldn't say anything else or other than that. Any question right over here down front? Um, Deja, this is for you. Um, just a sophomore, you're already you know one of the leading score. You're the leading scorer in the school's history. But to have um, someone like Summer, who's been around for you know so many seasons and been to this tournament before, what's it like to have her to kind of you know be a leader for you guys and, and help you grow and settle into this role? Um, I'm a junior, so sorry. Um, but being able to play with her finally for my first full year and her having the experience that she has has been just a tremendous thing. I mean, it's nothing like having a vet, a true vet on your team. Any more questions right over here in front? Um, yeah, and then building off that summer, you have been here your fair share of times. She, she, um, Deja just called you a, a vet on the team. How much pride do you take in being a leader and, you know, showing these young ladies what it takes to get to a tournament like this and, and to succeed in a tournament like this? How much pride do you take in being a senior leader, a sixth year senior leader, um, you know, and really just your final hurrah of your career? Um, I'm thankful. Obviously, I'm, I'm using my COVID year, so I'm thankful in a way that COVID happened because without COVID, I would not be here. And um, these last two years have been hard for me with my injury. So just to be able to be a vet and lead this team and all the uh, questions that they ask me throughout the season, um, very, very good questions that you wouldn't think uh, a lot of underclassmen would ask. They ask me those type of questions, especially about not only this tournament, but the MAC tournament. And uh, the question that they asked and the answers that I provided allowed us to be successful, as well as um, Adebola Adieye, who also was with us um, in the 2019 NCAA tournament. Um, so the questions that they ask, uh, they definitely prevailed us uh, throughout the MAC tournament. So hopefully uh, they've been asking away so far and hopefully that leads to more victories. <laughs> and then down here in front on the left. First, apologies, DeAsia, uh, and for, for both of you. Coming from the MAC, be going on the road and dealing with, do you want a big crowd, even if it's against you? And, and, and does, it, does it create energy in the building no matter who they're cheering for? Um, I wouldn't say we necessarily pay attention to the crowd, but um, we're thankful for whoever comes and supports women's basketball. Uh, we're thankful for all the fans uh, that do support women's basketball because um, during these times, it's starting to be um, brought to our attention 
that there are women's basketball players who deserve the recognition that is being given now. And women's basketball is a sport that needs to be watched and needs to be up there with all the other great sports that are always on ESPN. So we're thankful for whoever comes and supports. Uh, Paul Peck from Buffalo Bulls Radio. For both the Asia and Summer, you played against South Carolina earlier this year down in the Bahamas. What did you learn against playing against a very good, talented SEC team that you might be able to use in preparing for another very good SEC team tomorrow? Seeing that they are the number one team in the country and the way we played against them, I would say that it showed that this team that I'm a part of can compete with anyone in the country. Um, I would say that was very early in the season, and uh, it was actually one of our first few games as a team, and we were still trying to fill each other out, um, trying to see what we're good at, where should I pass this person the ball, what are they good at. Um, so I would say that game definitely showed us a lot, and it obviously showed our growth throughout the entire season, and uh, we actually uh, remind ourselves of that game a lot. Well, I do personally, just to see our growth throughout the entire season. So whenever like we lost, I believe one game in February, and just to look back at the growth from the team from then and now, it wasn't really anything to hang our head over, especially with it still in conference play and not necessarily in um, postseason play. But uh, to use that game for this game in particular, um, I would say it's a team effort, not really anything individually, but more so um, everything that we needed to work on when we play South Carolina, we've already touched up upon and our coaches already um, uh, provided us with a lot of information that has transferred onto the court for this upcoming game. We have time for one more question for our student athletes. Okay, student athletes, thank you guys for joining us today. You were dismissed and get ready to go for practice. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll open it up for questions for our head coach. Right here in front. Coach, obviously um, Tennessee hasn't had their leading scorer, Jordan Horston, for the past month. Um, not having her, though, does that change how you prepare for this game? Because she's not going to play again on Saturday? Or, um, you know, maybe how does that factor into the game plan, I guess, for you guys? We don't have our best defensive player either. And Cheyenne hasn't been with us for six weeks. And we, we had to adjust. And uh, I think Tennessee adjusts. You adjust what you have. There's, there's no excuses. There's no, um, uh, you know, asterisks to the, the, to the win or the loss. It's, it is what it is. And, Unfortunately, I hate these injuries for for both teams. Uh, you know, I certainly would wish Cheyenne could be with us. We'd be a, I think, a, a better defensive team with her. Um, so uh, it's unfortunate, but it, it is what it is. And we're not gonna, you know, I, I, Tennessee is Tennessee. They they got multiple um, players that that can do multiple things. And our goal is to just not look at Tennessee, but to really focus on Buffalo. And, and do Buffalo and, and focus on Buffalo because it can get overwhelming for young kids, if young players. If you think about, you know, all the history behind here and the, the greatness that happens before here, 40 years of NCAA births. Um, and so we say, this, let's, let's just do Buffalo. Just to follow up, <laughs> you, you, know, you talked about, you know, having it not get overwhelming, but this team and a lot of players on this team have that NCAA tournament experience and, you know, some players that went to the Sweet 16 with you guys a couple years ago. How does that help in the process of not making the moment too big and, and getting overwhelmed? Oh, we're just excited. We're just in the now. We're just so so about what what's what's today about, what where our feet are and and, and, and it really can't look back a couple of years ago and say, this is what it felt like and this is what it's going to be like. Summer can't answer that. I can't answer that. This is for these young people, and this is what makes it so exciting to be a part of the March because it's so different and so new. And it's so uh, the difference is Addie's now is Addie Addie. <laughs> Addie Addie yeah, yeah, is just seeing her right now at this moment is all I care about because it's just beautiful to see. If you haven't met Addie, uh, you're missing out on, on a treat. And to sit next to Summer, a summer came to us six years ago and would never speak. She just did her shoulders, and she she really had no she didn't she didn't value her voice. And when they hear her speak and articulate and speak so long and and beautiful and graceful and and look so beautiful over here and and, and watching uh, Sierra uh, Deasia learn 
uh, from from her, and and, and, and the agent's gonna be, you know, that that person next to get text from Sierra Dillard just before I got on this stage, and they hear her say, you know, coach, we put pe Buffalo in people's mouths already by by just being who we are. Don't go to that stage and be somebody else. And we're not we're not gonna look back. We're not gonna look forward. We're gonna just be. Felicia, for for you, you know, having your team in really oh. one of the cradles of women's basketball, and you think about Pat Summit's influence oh, on the man. game. How do you communicate that history to your players as they're entering here? You know, we're 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 we're, we're talking. We talked about Pat a lot earlier on what she's done and how I had a, my first, you know, sit down with her and 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 how she paved the way uh, for women's basketball. And we also talk about Lady Vivian Stringer, how she paved the way for women's basketball, and also um, uh, Coach Washington from Kansas, and uh, what Dawn Staley's doing right now with the, the net and. The, an opportunity for us all to become and uh but the, what's neat thing is that as this place grew other places can grow as well and it just gives us a formula to to, to start a, a beginning somewhere else and uh, why not buffalo why not now and so uh as, as this unbelievable start and all these blessings that we, we receive because of the the foundation that those un incredible women have set uh, these young people's time is right now and they can build Buffalo to Newfound Heights. And, and if you got a dream, why not dream in color? Why not dream of a statue of someone in front of University at Buffalo that, that's a woman that played a sport that happened to become and said that her time was right now. And so that's how we talk to, to our players about history. It's about becoming history one day for yourself. In order to do that, you gotta believe that you can play anybody, anytime, anywhere, in any place. Down here on the front of the left. Coach, you mentioned Summer just a bit ago. Um, Summer herself talked about just the injury she had to go through a few years ago and then the COVID year, being a six-year senior. I know there's probably a lot to say, but what has Summer meant to this program and to you just over the incredible six years that she's been here? Yeah, you can say a lot of things about Summer Hemphill, but the one word that I would say about Summer is culture. She bought into the culture. She bought into what we stood for. She bought into the defensive side of the ball. She, she bought into the, the, the little silly things that I think are important for young people to grow into young women and eventually phenomenal women. And she not only believed it for herself, she shared that with the, the other players and, uh, and uh, certain things won't be accepted. Uh, being a part of our, our women's basketball program, we've turned down a lot of talent uh, that wanted to be a part of our program because they didn't fit our culture. And she was the one that shared with us, hey, coach, this young lady that came up for an unofficial visit, she's really good, but she doesn't fit our culture. And I, I trust her, and she trusts me. We trust our culture here, and we're building something different than any other country, any other school in the country. It's just who we are, and Summer is a part of who we are. And uh, I tell you, she, she's not just a player and a, a six-year vet. She's like my daughter. And um, I, I love these young ladies hard. I push them hard, but I love them hard as well. And here in front. Hey. Felicia, your, your first meeting with, with Pat Summit. what do you remember about that? You know, I, I was with um, uh, Gail Gestoncourt and Carol Ross, and we talked about the players having five, meet five people that they want they would love to meet, living or dead. And, and one person I said that was living, uh, I said I would love to meet Pat Summit because Pat Summit actually recruited my sister. Uh, when my sister was, one, was the best basketball player in my family, and she never played because she got pregnant at 15, and she turned the scholarship down and stayed home. And I said, I would love to meet her. I would have loved to know um, if she remembered anything about my sister. Well, the opportunity came. We are in Washington, D.C., and she was there to see one of her players, and we were all getting our food in this little you know, fast food place, and I sat down, and who sits right in front of me? It's this icon of a human being. <laughs> this Pat had something. I'm like, oh, God, what do I say? I mentioned nothing about my sister. It was all about me and coaching. But it, it was like I was so selfish for that moment, and, and I don't even regret it. And she was so giving of her time and so giving uh, 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 of all that she, she – that's what makes her so great. She will give you her whole playbook, but she'll beat you because there's something that she brings that no one else can bring. And then eventually I ran into her – at a Final Four, and she, her team was in it, and they were walking down the street, and I was walking towards her, and it was a couple, three years later, and I just know there's no way. This lady knows so many people. She's just an icon. I'm like, gonna wave and continue. I said, how you doing, Coach? And, how you doing, Felicia? I'm like, and that's no disrespect of her accent, but it was an accent, and it was a beautiful Southern accent. And she walked by, and, and I said, 
thank you for saying hi. And she said, sure, have a good day. And I walked by, and I honestly had a tear in my eye. I'm like, this is the most incredible lady. And I don't, I don't get starstruck. I met President Obama. I met, you know, Magic John. I met a lot of people in my life. Nothing. Hi, hello. But Pat has summit was somebody I said, it's going to be etched in my brain for the rest of my life. And so I get that, the oddness and the greatness that, that these young people may feel here because I, I sense it too. But I think the way you respect somebody like a Pathead Summit is that you stay authentic to who you are. You build it the way you build it. And you trust in your, uh, your, your skill set and let the chips fall where they may. You're in the back on the right side. Hey, Coach Andy with ESPN. You mentioned Dawn Staley and the piece of the net. Can you tell us about when you got that and was there a note attached to it and what did that mean to you? Yes, it, 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 she, she sent a note to everyone. It, it, basically, she said, dreamers dream, coaches coach, and we all can basically become. And, and I just need you to know that from a person that went to a Final Four and, and, and won it, uh, this net is just a reminder of, of I see you. I, I know you're working, you're working hard to, to try to build something. It's just a kind of friendly reminder that you too can be. You just got to go out there and find a way to take it. And, and, and I paraphrase it for sure. But, you know, I, you know, this is my 33rd year in the business. And um, I just, you know, sometimes you kind of get complacent. You don't realize. You just kind of just kind of go on this mundane day and you yell at kids. You, you tell your husband for the 97,000th time, oh, what's for dinner? We got to order out because I'm not cooking because I don't cook. And, and, and you get, you get con comfortable in your own way. And that, that net said, stop think, realize, go take it. And that's all of us. It's not just for, for all only black women, it's for any body. And I think that, you know, I shared that with my son. You, you can, you know, I think my son's best days are his latter days. And, you know, even though you don't have some success at the beginning, if you keep fighting, you keep trying, you keep believing, you too can. And you just got to believe it. And that net is a significant piece that I have over my computer. As I turn my computer on every day, I look at it and say, yeah, today is the day. I take it one inch better. Thank you for asking. Cora Hall, the Knoxville News Sentinel. You talked about a little bit about your, your interactions with Pat Summit and what that meant to you. Um, you're now facing her protege tomorrow in, in Thompson Bowling Arena. What's it like for you to face off with a, a former lady of all who learned from you know, someone who you admired, like, like Pat Summit? Coaching is coaching. I have a lot of respect for Coach Harper and, and, and her staff and what she's done from Western Carolina to NC State to Missouri State. Uh, to hear, and, and, and I, this is a coach that she breathes out 25 wins a season. <laughs> she, she's a winner, and she's an incredible winner. Uh, she has a great team, and she got a great, you know, university. I think the only way I can respect somebody like her is give her my best effort. And so um, and that's what I'll do. I'll give my best effort. Our kids will give their best effort. I'm certain her kids are going to be ready to go. And, and it's going to be just coaches coaching and having a good time on the sideline because at the end of the day, I tell my players this all the time, my goal is to get you to a MAC championship. You got, your, your goal is to take me further to where you need us to go. So this is for our players. This is, our players are in charge and they're in control. And, you know, these young ladies, they love to go to the mall. I don't want to go to the mall twice a day, but that's where we went. Went to, mall, went to your, your mall here twice. That's what they want to do. Um, I, I'm in the mall, too, getting massaged by the little chair and buy, never bought Lululemon. I'm at the Lululemon store. I'm like, what am I going to do at the mall? But this is what they want to do. I, made my, I gave them my word. I'm going to do what they want to do. And so the majority went to the mall. I, I went to the Dagon Mall with them. So... This is for them. This is for them. And I don't make it bigger than what it is, but if they want me to take it higher because that's what they ask of me, I will take it higher. Down here on the left. Teresa Walker, the Associated Press. You've been at previous tournaments. As you look around, do you see some differences uh, from past tournaments? And is there something that you maybe have noticed that needs to be changed in the future? That's a loaded question, <laughs> and I'm not prepared for all of that question, but I will say I'm excited about our hotel being in a closer proximity. The last time we were in a tournament, we stayed an hour away, and, and, uh, and we couldn't take our shoot-around because we couldn't come shoot-around and go back and then come to the game, and uh, the proximity of our hotel is different. Uh, I, 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 I feel in the air that uh, the NCA has take note, took notice of that we're here, we just want to be a part of this thing. We're not trying to be better than anyone. We're just trying to get what's what's respectfully ours, and and, and respect to the NCAA. 
Uh, there's more things that's going to be done. There's more things that can be done. And I think that you got to let things grow. And I think that it's important that you, we don't look at this tournament and say, well, they, we, don't, we didn't get that two pair of socks and somebody else got two pair of socks. Let's not knit, knit and pick everything. See the growth. And I'm all about, you know, as I see with my players, you know, every second they grow and every minute they get better. Every day is a whole beautiful day. I think that we have to be as patient with our, our organization that we're in as well and allow it to continue to grow. They raise their hand, they're making changes, and let's be patient enough to, to see the growth become what, what it's supposed to be and not nitpick everything. How far away are you this time? From? Your hotel. I think it's about 15 minutes. And, and, and my, my bus driver, he, if I ask him to get us in here in 12, I'm scared. Because we were on two wheels at one point. I said, this is not, this, I think 15 is the minimum we should take. All right. So we got a great bus driver, and it's just, the kids are laughing and having a good time. And we got to get here in plenty of time to do what we have to do. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Thank you guys for thank joining you so us. Much. Coach, you thank you for joining basketball? us.